Welcome to the Secrets of College Planning. I'm your host, Anthony Uva, and today we're going to get some insight into baseball at the college level. My guest today is Joe Leterio. He is the head men's baseball coach at Rutgers University. Welcome to the show. Appreciate you having me. Yeah, so uh, usually I start my guests uh, where they went to college. So where'd you go to school? I actually went to Rutgers University. <laughs> right. uh, you know, I came full circle, came back around, but I started my career at Rutgers uh, let's say in the late 80s somewhere. Great. Yeah. So uh, let's just go back into high school. Um, when did you start thinking about going to college? Was it freshman year, senior year? When did it all begin for back you? Back then it was more around your junior, closer to after your junior season, believe it or not, in baseball. Uh, the springtime, you know, going into your junior season, you figured you have to have a good year uh, for the, you know, the college coaches to see and to start recruiting you. Yeah. Recruiting back then for baseball was probably more the summertime heading into your senior year. They wanted to see guys develop, you mm -hmm. know, as they, they got through the process. And uh, so between junior and senior is when I started to really think about it. Now, did you get heavily recruited in high no, school? No, no. I, you know, did a lot of recruiting myself. Uh, you know, wanted to play local. Uh, Seton Hall, St. Saint, uh, Saint John's, Rutgers were the schools that I kind of we're looking at, uh, I had two older brothers that went through the process, uh, both wound up at Montclair State. You know, so they went through it, they knew what I had to do. I, I made a, uh, a tape, you know, yeah. had the tape sent out and tried to get some interest that way and that's kind of how I got recruited. Great, yeah. so now you're at Rutgers University. Um, how's it like, what, what's it like? Uh, being back here at Rutgers or as a freshman? Going as, a into freshman as a freshman in, in college? Uh, at, as a freshman, Rutgers. it's, it's uh, an eye-opener. You, you get on the field and usually, you know, you're one of the top three guys in your baseball team in high school. But when you get to college, there's 30 other guys just as good as you. So <laughs> it's an eye-opener. You know, it's one of those where um, I better start getting better at the sport if I want to stick to it and play it. Yeah. So Great. So, um, so now you graduate from Rutgers University. Um, how does one go from graduating there to becoming the head baseball coach there? Well, it was, a, um, I, I guess, a long process. You know, I started out as a volunteer coach. I, I, I got, uh, after college ball, did a little bit of minor league ball, or not minor league, um, independent ball. Okay. And that didn't work out. So the next phase was, okay, where do I go from here? Uh, went back to Rutgers, you know, to, and actually became a volunteer coach. So I was a volunteer coach the first year out of college. Um, and that led to a high school, had a high school job in New Jersey. Uh, from there, uh, Monmouth University, the head coach there, that Dean Eholt, heard about me. I went there for about three years, and I went to South Carolina for a year, and wow. then uh, became the, the, the head coach at Wagner College for a dozen years before I came back to, to Rutgers. So it's been a, you know, a long uh, process to get here, but you know, got back to where I wanted to be. Wow, fantastic. So now you take over at uh, Rutgers University. Um, what's the team like? Well, what's the atmosphere that you created at Rutgers well, for baseball? Well, it's a cultural excellence. That's what we're pushing. We want the culture to uh, be a positive one, one that's uh, kind of a relentless um, pursuit of excellence, if you want to you know, say that. Uh, we're, we're trying to, uh, and everything they do, every, every asset of the, uh, facet of the, of the game, not just baseball, but the school, um, the community. So we're, we're trying to uh, make sure these guys are complete players and complete, complete person. Good. So now, um, the requirements for baseball. Uh, what type of students are you looking for at the high school level? Uh, well, if, if you go by tools, you're looking for the kids, obviously, that can run, uh, that have strong arms, you know, can swing it. So you're looking at the actual five tools. Uh, but more importantly nowadays is the character of the kid, uh, the family. You know, that, that's become a large part of recruiting now where you're not only recruit, recruiting the kid, you're recruiting the kid's uh, family. So you want to get involved. You want to get strike up relationships with those, um, you know, with the family, just, just to make sure that they're the type of kid that you want in your program. Now, um, high school baseball, um, do you look at high school baseball? Or do you look at club baseball, AAU baseball? Right. How, do, how does, where, where do you look? Well, it's gotten, um, it's gotten crazy. You know, there's so many travel teams now with, with uh, baseball. You know, obviously you start off with the high school teams and you want to watch the high school teams. But after high school season is over, and we're in season during that time, so it's tough to get out and see a lot of games. Mm -hmm. So our big recruiting is after high school through the summertime. You know, even this time of the year, the fall, uh, we'll get a chance to go see more. But it's a lot of it now where the travel teams and you try to follow the guys, um, and they're going all over the place now. 
So um, is there any particular tournaments that, that are better than others? Is there any particular AAU teams? Right. Uh, is there a hotbed for a particular area? Do you find it more East Coast, West Coast? Well, uh, you know, we all, my whole staff is from Jersey. So we all have our, our guys that we know who to call and talk to. So, you know, we seem to get a lot of guys from, from Tom's River. Uh, you know, obviously Tom, Todd Frazier, you know, <laughs> is from that area. And uh, we do well with those guys. But... We're going throughout the entire, you know, New Jersey tri-state area, but we're also branching out with a new staff that I have. You know, we've got a couple of California kids that came in this year. Wow. Uh, a kid from Chicago and two from Miami. So we're starting to, you know, with playing in the Big Ten, it's uh, we got to get out and, and uh, recruit more, you know, worldwide. Do you do you find the world being uh, uh, an easier place to recruit? Do you find it where most of the kids are still here in the United States, or do you have to go overseas to find students uh mostly united states for baseball for now you know yeah. i think it's branching out a little bit uh in the dr and everything else um but mostly it's it's uh united states okay and so um grade wise what uh what are you looking at uh for students with with the grades well i think a big thing you know what, what our culture is now we don't want to babysit guys you know uh recruiting has changed back in you know, 20 years ago when I was doing this, you're going after the best talent. Uh, you want that kid for you. Uh, and then, you know, you'll teach them everything else. But now it's not like that. You know, we want the kids that are, are quality kids that can, that are able to, you know, handle the books and do the schoolwork first. You know, then we're looking at the talent in baseball. So we're looking for those guys that are, are you know, in the 1200s and the SATs. You know, Rutgers standards have really jumped up since being in the Big Ten. Wow. Our average uh, SAT is at 1330. Wow. So, um, you know, you got to be able to get into school and be able to show you can do it. You don't want to get the kids that you have to babysit and watch over and it just becomes another part of the job where, you know, you don't need that. There's plenty of talent out there where you can find the guys that can excel in both areas of, uh, you know, school work and, and on the field. So now a student comes to Rutgers University. What could they expect for a whole year's worth of baseball? Uh, do they come in in August? Do they come in in September? Right. Give me from August until the following August. What we're starting to do now is bring guys in in uh, the summertime for summer class just to get ahead of the academics. Uh, that gives them the opportunity to get with our strength coach. Uh, it also gives them the opportunity to get on our facilities. So it just, we started it this past year. Um, you know, they come in for a four-week class. Mm. Uh, it just gets them more comfortable with, you know, the, the school, you know, being a big university as it is. You know, as a freshman, going to college is a big deal. Sure. You know, so to get them in early when there's eight other guys that are on the baseball team with them, mm -hmm. it kind of gets that a little bit more comfortable. So when they do come back, uh, they know it. You know, it's, it feels more comfortable. So we, we're starting that up in um, late August. So September through mid-October, we're going fall ball. You know, it's baseball. Uh, 7 o'clock lift in the morning. Practices from 9 to, you know, 11, 30, 12 o'clock every day. Uh, then school works from one o'clock to nine o'clock at night, you know, wow. so their classes, the days are split. Um, we just changed it up uh, a few years ago. I changed it up to have morning practices. It, it gives the guys a sense of, okay, in the morning, we're doing all their athletic stuff. And then now in the afternoon, it's all, you know, the books, school work. School work. So um, we'll go through mid-October. And then when once mid-October starts, we go in individuals. Uh, individuals are, we'll bring four or five guys out at a time. Uh, try to you know, work with them skill-wise uh, while we're also running and lifting and, mm -hmm. and kind of... That's that takes the time them all through up. the holidays? That takes up to Thanksgiving and after, you know, right through break. You know, and then when we get back from break, it's February 15th, we're on the road at Miami, wow. and we finish up in, uh, you know, hopefully June if we're hitting the regional. So it's... It, you better like baseball if you're going to college to play baseball. <laughs> that's a lot of it. Well, that brings me to my next question. A lot of parents talk about... It's all about the sport. It's not the, nothing about academics. How does Rutgers handle something like that? Well, they got to understand that it's a lot about the academics. You know, uh, you, you can't play if you can't pass the classes. You know, we've had some kids, you know, be, show that they couldn't do it, do both. Uh, so you better be able to, to do the classwork. Classwork comes first. You know, that's, that's the most important thing. 3%, I think, if the number hasn't changed, 3%, you know, go pro. Uh, that's a very small number, so yeah. you better have an education and a degree, you know, something you can fall back on after that, you know, your playing career is over. Now, do you find uh, a lot of students that come there, you find that they util utilize and networking with a lot of people to, because like you said, they're not going to go to the minor leagues, major leagues. Right. Um, 
what, what do you find in the years that you've been there? What do you find as uh, kids, what they're studying and where, they, where they're ending up? You know, the biggest thing about Rutgers is our alumni force. You know, there's, there's and I'm an alumni and there's a ton of us out there. Um, so internships is big. You know, we're able to put guys in the city or even locally that uh, are former players that have their own businesses now or former players that are high up in their uh, you know, business that they can get these guys in for internships. And it's, it's a, a wide variety of, of what they're doing now. Uh, yeah. Business is a big, for Rutgers, a big business school. We've got a couple doing engineering, which is very tough for, sure. uh, you know, to play a sport and do that. Uh, but yeah, they're all, they're scattered all over, you know, uh, but the best thing about it is being able to kind of get them a head start in that too on the, you know, getting them in the internships and so they have an idea of what to expect. And they, they start as early as uh, freshman year with, with that? No, that's more of a junior and senior approach. You okay. know, your freshman year, you're kind of getting them through all their uh, requirements. Uh, and most of them are learning what they want to do, you know, at that time. They're coming in. We're recruiting so early nowadays that, you know, these freshmen and sophomores in high school uh, are coming, you know, committing to us before they even think about what they want to do with life. So yeah. they're getting in there as, as a freshman and sophomore in college and kind of learning what's the next step for them, where they want to go, and what's the process getting there. So Now, a lot of parents talk about red shirt. Uh, you hear a lot in that in football. Right. Um, is there something like that in baseball? Yes. Yes. Uh, um, you know, there's different ways to, to go about the red shirt. There's a medical red shirt. That means if you, if you get an injury, uh, a season-ending injury that where you can't play, you know, you'll get that year of eligibility, eligibility back. Uh, a regular red shirt, they usually don't happen until after the year's over. Um, you don't have to declare the red shirt until after the season, and you won't declare it until your senior season to get that extra year back. But, mm. um, you know, I, I think it's less and less nowadays with, with the red shirting. Back mm -hmm. when I played, there was a lot more of it. Uh, now it's kind of, let's see how the season goes. And if we got a kid on the, you know, the fence of where we should play him in the last few weeks or not to redshirt him, that's, we'll make our decision. Now, do you find in baseball, do you find a lot of uh, walk-ons where they don't get recruited, but they, they try to try out for the team? We have a few of them. Um, I think it, it, when you say walk-on, it's more of a recruited walk-on. You know, the guys that show up that you don't know about usually are either, you know, um, didn't play on their high school team or just want to give it a shot and be on the field. Uh, the recruited walk-ons are the ones that you need. Mm -hmm. um, we're only allowed 27 kids. Uh, we, our roster size is 35. That's our, our limits, NCAA. Mm -hmm. uh, you're only allowed 27 of them to be on money. Okay. So you have to have eight walk-ons somewhere scattered throughout the program. Uh, so they're, they're just as big. Um, you know, maybe they can't get the scholarship or you don't think they're scholarship worthy up front, but they're going to work themselves into a scholarship and that's something that is possible. So that brings me to my next question. Mm -hmm. A lot of families talk about money. Right. Uh, how's it work at a division one school, two school, three school? Do you know all the, how, how it all works? Yeah, division three, you can't offer uh, athletic money. You know, I know there's scholarship money in terms of, of academics. Mm -hmm. And division two, they can offer scholarships. Uh, in Division One, where we're at, we're only allowed 11.7 .7 scholarships. So you have to do the math. You have 35 guys on your team, 27 on money, and only 11.7, .7, you know, scholarships. So uh, the full ride in baseball is very uh, small chance of that happening. Yeah. You know, we're gonna we're we're gonna split up the the scholarship into percentages. We'll give you 40 percent uh, athletically. Maybe we'll get you another 20 percent academically. So we'll we'll try to package it together mm -hmm. uh, to get you a good number. But full rides in baseball is is unheard of, really. Unless you're this phenomenal uh, yeah, person that uh, right. and the major probably leagues get, want. You're it. probably getting drafted anyway at that point. <laughs> yes. <laughs> now, how many uh, students? Uh, do you have to recruit to even find 27 good quality? Is it hundreds and hundreds of kids that it's you're hundreds. seeing? Yeah, it's, it's over hundreds. You know, it's like I said, the, the, the recruiting world has changed a little bit with all the travel programs now. So it's gotten watered down to where, you know, each program may have one or two guys in their system that you have to look through six teams to find those kids. Wow. Um, so it's not like it used to be where one program had, all, you know, five guys that were D1 worthy. Uh, so it's a little bit more word, you know, watered down. Uh, both of my guys tomorrow are heading out to Fort Myers, Florida, uh, to spend a week there looking at games and watching, you know, kids. So, um, yeah, hundreds and hundreds of kids to find those. You now, know, do, do the students send you videotapes? And what do you have to have on those videotapes? Because a lot of parents ask, right. what has to be on the videotape? Is it have 
to be a whole game, it just no. highlights, uh, does the kid have to talk, not talk? Yes. What, the, what's on The it? biggest thing that, that, that parents should know is you want a two to four minute video. No coach in the right mind is going to sit and watch 20 minutes. We don't have that time. And from all the, the tapes that we get or the emails that we get, um, we don't have the time to go through them all. So a two to four minute video where a coach can look at it and what I do is just click it on YouTube and you say, okay, four minutes, I can, I can watch this kid. Um, and there it's just, you know, your basic, um, if you're a position player, you know, you're swinging it a few times, taking a couple of ground balls or, or fly balls from where you're at uh, and run, you know, hit the last one, run the first base. So you're just showing your tools, what you can do. Pitcher, I would just give angles from, from you know, from the mound, back angle, side angle, just to show. But it doesn't have to be this big production. Uh, I think some parents think they have to go hire all these people to, to make this big production and all, all these lights and bells and <laughs> whistles. And that doesn't get your kid drafted you yeah. know, or, or, or recruited. Um, the kid will get himself recruited. And if he's good enough, we'll find him. But, you know, I think just a short video is, is the best thing. Yeah. Now, do you rely on a lot of uh, people that you know at the high school level, the AAU level, to, to, to tell you about certain students? Yes, without a doubt. There's, there's no way we could, as a staff, find all these kids. So you have to rely on all your connections you made over the years and all the, you know, the experiences you had with guys that let you know, okay, this kid can play for you, this is your type of player. And then what we will do is obviously go out and watch them. Um, you know, one other thing that I, that I didn't mention for, for parents is they should really look at the camps. There are camps out there that, that are money makers that will send, you know, 300 people just to get money. Uh, but they got to really look into do their homework online to see how many, um, you know, the numbers are out there. If they're a camp there that 20 kids, then they're serious about your kid. But that, that's what they need to do is get in front of the, the, uh, the coaches that they're, they're interested in. I would tell a kid to narrow it down to five. I would tell a kid to make sure that there's some D2s and threes in there just because some of us, you know, think we're better than we are, you know. <laughs> so, um, but they should really narrow it down or they'll drive themselves crazy going all, you know, all over the country. Well, that brings me to a next question then. Um, camps, clinics, AAU teams, right. uh, summer league teams. You have kids that play on four or five teams. You have kids that play on only one. Right. Um, what do you recommend to a lot of these students? Well, I think some of them do it for the wrong reasons. You know, when I played, I played in Legion. Uh, and then I played in the Essex County League, which was a little bit older, but I loved to play. You know, it wasn't playing to get recruited. I was playing because I loved the game. Yeah. You know, I would go in the morning or a one o'clock game in, on a Saturday and get in my car and drive to another place just to play a six o'clock game. <laughs> I loved it. You know, that, that, that's what it's about. I think now they're trying to do it, and I think it's too much of a push to be seen or get recruited. And they're putting all this wear and tear on their arms now, these pitchers are especially, mm -hmm. to where they're more prone to injury. Um, you know, I, I think, listen, if they're good enough, we're going to hear about them. We're going to find them. You know, I think that that's some of the, the misconception where they have to be seen. They have to go to this highest program where they're going to get more looks, mm -hmm. where uh, it doesn't matter the name. We're going to we're going to hear about you. We'll find you. And we'll, we'll, you know. Now, how you. about um, opportunities at the college level? Um, if I'm not a second baseman and the second baseman is graduating, right, mm -hmm. uh, do I have a chance maybe I could play second? Or do you change kids from, you know, a third baseman to a second baseman? Right. How, do, how does it work? And how does it work as a pitcher sure. or a catcher? Well, what we do is in the fall is the big time of the year for me because I will bring in, you try to recruit the athletes. You know, if they're shortstops in high school or if they're center fielders in high school, you try to project uh, where they can play in college. We had last year alone, I think three shortstops playing. One was in left field, one was at third, one was at short, you know, and one was at second, so four. <laughs> so you try to project it at a high school, you see their tools. Uh, in the fall is when I start to mix everybody up. I just, before I got here, uh, defensive BP is what I, uh, I, I like to call it. I'll put five different lineups up with guys in totally different positions. Some of them they've never played before, just to see what they can do. Um, so, so you get a sense of the more you know, the better, obviously, in high school. Uh, and pitching is, pitching's a little different. You know, we're not going to overuse you. You know, our guys will not throw more than three innings max at mm -hmm. one time in the fall. Um, you know, you're probably going to go one to two innings, you know, inner squads, but we're not going to overuse you. You're not going to go out there and throw six to seven innings, especially and, fall. And what does a pitcher have to have to get to the college level? You hear about these parents, oh, my kid has to pitch 100 miles an right. hour, 90 miles an hour, whatever mm -hmm. it is. Uh, I know when I played in high school uh, baseball, 
and that was years ago as well, you were lucky you found the 90, yeah. 95 mile an right. hour pitcher. No, you didn't see too many of them back then. Now it seems like there's a lot more of them. Uh, you know, kids are getting stronger and bigger and, and specializing, but um, command is a big thing, command of two pitches. You know, I think that's, that's big at that level. Uh, if they're, they're able to throw the curveball for a strike consistently, you know, um, obviously the gun, the radar gun, everybody looks at it because, okay, if he has the arm strength, then that's something that we can develop. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't need to develop. He's already got it. Um, but I think, you know, uh, we're going to find you, you know, that lefty, that crafty lefty that, that keeps guys off balance. Um, you don't have to throw 90. You know, you have to compete. You have to limit your walks, um, you know, and, and, and just, you know, battle. And it's, it's something where in age brings the 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 faster pitching right, right? i mean you yes. you got these 17 18 year old kids when they get to college okay that maybe they're only in the 80s but by the time they're juniors in college now you have a 21 22 year old kid right uh, maybe they are pitching in the 90s if there's uh you get that time to develop them you know they're going to grow uh we're going to get them on the weight room we're going to get them a nutritionalist you know so they're, they're going to actually put on some good weight to where they will gain miles per hour on their fastball um, as long as they're not overused as they're younger. You yeah. know, you see that too many times where they're overused and by the time they get to their junior, it, it's too much. You know, so you actually look at that too. You, you want to see how many innings they're throwing. Are they taking care of their arm? You know, so that all that comes into play. And how about uh, catchers? So the same, same instance for catchers? Same thing. I had a kid that caught for me um, three years back that was a starting shortstop in high school. You know, just an athletic kid. I needed a, I needed a catcher. Uh, it was a, a situation where the backup guy got hurt and the other guy um, was hurt. I mean, both guys were hurt, so I needed a guy to put back there. He wound up playing and catching for three years. So, um, yeah, we're going to find the athletes and we're going to find out where you fit best. Great. Now, uh, high school, uh, when you go to the high school games compared to club games, is there anything different that you're looking for? or Because high school is not like the club teams, right? High school is a little bit more baseball. You know, the kids care a little bit more. Uh, when we get so watered down in the summertime, a lot of these kids know they're playing in a couple of days anyway. So it's kind of like they're just going about the, uh, the motions. Uh, so in high school and even Legion, as small it is, as it is now, you see them fight a little bit harder for these games. Uh, I, I'll tell you one thing that you look for in these games is how they do when they're failing. You know, I think that's a big point to, for the parents to know and kids to know. We want to see baseball is a tough game. You know, it's about failing. It's about learning from your failures and moving on. Um, we want to see what you do when you fail. You know, you go sit at the end of the dugout, put your head down, you know, when you strike out or you talking to the next guy and, you know, um, trying to prepare yourself for your, your next step bat. So that, that's a big part of it. Yeah. Now, do you, do, you, uh, do you find multiple kids at some games? Yes. I mean, the, the best thing is you hear about a kid. Uh, you're going out to, to look at Johnny and then there's Jim over there and he's looking pretty good. So that's how it works. You know, you hear about kids, you go find, you go look at them and you look at the, the, other, the other team and the team he's playing on and you'll find guys. Mm. That's, that's the best way to do it. And, and so you're combing pretty much the whole country. You're, you're not just focused on just the Northeast or right. Northeast. Our, our, at Rutgers, we're always trying to keep the best kids home. You know, uh, New Jersey is a big pool of talent. You know, we got schools coming from out of state all the time, coming to play, you know, take our guys. Yeah. Um, and that happens a lot. So our job obviously is to keep the talent here, you know, but with, you know, being close to the city and, and being in the Big Ten now, we're able to get some, you know, out, out of state guys that, that are interested. So is that how you pretty much entice the kids to, to come to Rutgers is, uh, hey, we're, mm -hmm. we're only miles away from New York City. Um, yeah. What kind of atmosphere does Rutgers University give a student when they get there? Uh, I, I think it's a quality atmosphere. I mean, obviously, it's um, it's one where you're going to get an opportunity to do what you want before life. You know, we have over 100 majors, so you can go in as a business-minded person and say, I like to do the communications and the better, so let me look at this. You're not going to have to transfer. Uh, as far as, you know, uh, being in the city or, um, you know, sporting events, you know, there's just everything and anything you can do around Rutgers. You know, I, when I went there, obviously you're, you're a freshman and you're a little nervous, but when you leave there, it's, uh, I can't explain to you how much you love the place, you love the area, and, and you've learned so much from it. Great. So we're coming to the end of our show, okay. and usually I ask my guests, um, what advice do you want to give to the parents that their sons 
want to come to a school like Rutgers, they want to play baseball, what advice do you want to give to those, those kids? Just make sure that they're, they're aware of our level. You know, come see what, what a, a game of ours. Um, come watch us. Come learn from us. And I think that's from anywhere. But to come to Rutgers, if, if it's a big recruit, uh, you're going to get an experience. You're going to get an experience of a lifetime. Great. Well, thank you very All much right. for coming thank, on the show. I appreciate thanks for having me. It. Yeah. So you've been watching The Secrets of College Planning. I'm your host, Anthony Uva. Until next time.